Welcome, welcome everybody to God in the Midst radio broadcast, Get em Radio. Welcome, welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And all, as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, uh, this is our Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your your teacher for today, Pastor Mark McCoy, and we're going to be looking at 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 through 22. 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 7, verses 12 through 22. And this morning, I'm going to have the, uh, uh, what is this thing, uh, the gate, Bible Gateway read or, uh, yeah, read this lesson for us, and I think I got it at a good spot. So. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prosperously effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. Yes, yes. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called, called by, by my name, name shall humble, humble themselves, themselves and pray, and seek, seek my face, face, and turn from their, their wicked ways, ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Yes. Now mine eyes shall be open, and mine ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Mm -hmm. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, yes. that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. Mm -hmm. And as for thee, yes. if thou wilt walk before me, yes. as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, yes. and shalt observe my statutes and my judgments. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, kingdom. according as I have covenanted with David thy father, yes. saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away, mercy. and forsake my statutes and my commandments, mercy, Lord. Mercy. which I have set before you, Mm. and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Mercy, God. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, mm -hmm. which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight, and Mercy, will make God. it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. Mm. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it, mm. so that he shall say, why hath the Lord done mm. thus unto this land mm. and unto this house? And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, Mercy God, which Mercy. brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was Second Chronicles chapter 7 verses 12 through 22. Um, the title for today's lesson, uh, one is, It is Better to Obey, and the other one, um, uh, I call it a subtitle, is To Trust and Obey. To Trust and Obey. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, the key verse is verse 7, I mean, verse 14, and we're quite familiar with that verse. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal the land. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our key concept for this lesson, God both blesses and disciplines his children. Pete Dunn, uh, 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 both are done 
because he loves us and wants the best for us. Oh, hallelujah. So, 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 so they understand that, that, that God blesses us and, and his discipline is also a blessing. I, I, I'm at a point now, I was talking to a school principal and, um, uh, on last night and he was saying, you know, we got a, this millennial generation, he's a high school, uh, principal. He said, this millennium generation don't understand the blessing of, 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 of discipline. And, 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 and unfortunately, uh, the reason why they don't understand it is because of their parents who don't understand discipline. So, so somewhere along the line, we, we've lost this, this, this generation uh, to not understanding that there are consequences to our choices. We, we have choices. We can make whatever choice we want. But there are consequences to that choice. And we have no choice in what those consequences ought to be. And, and that's what God is doing in this text. He's, he's letting uh, 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 the people know that there are consequences to their choices. Now, let, let me go on. The, the, key, the keys for kids for this lesson, the keys for kids, is God loves us so much that, that he gives us so many chances. Even though we may sometimes disobey him and, and he disciplined us, God still gives us the chance to ask for forgiveness and also change our behavior. Changing your behavior, that's called repentance. Yes, yes. So as we look at this lesson today, the lesson facts that we're going to learn is to summarize the promise of both blessings and disciplines that the Lord spoke to Solomon. The biblical principle that we want to grab all to is to tell how these promises serve to both encourage and warn Christians today. And the daily application that we want to take from this lesson is to keep a, a, a journal during the coming weeks, which to, to record times of blessings and disciplines from the Lord, along with, with the lessons learned from this experience. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so whether you keep a written journal or a mental journal, it just, just, just start marking these things down for the next week. As we look at this lesson, we're going to break it down into three parts. Uh, number one, God's commandments, of uh, 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 not commandments, but God's confirmation, if you will, uh, uh, of the temple, uh, his confirmation or his consecration of the temple, uh, God's message to the people, and then God's message for Solomon. So let, let's, let's, let's go into our text. So let me tell you about the background. Uh, um, um, Solomon in the sixth chapter he 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 he's, he's dedicating the temple and he and he prayed unto God and 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 and, and he, he specifically asked God to forgive everyone who will repent and return to him but Solomon also knew in the sixth chapter that 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 poor rain fall and, and agricultural stuff pestilence and sickness were 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 punishments for sin. He understood that there, there was consequences to sin and it would even affect the land. And so, in this seventh chapter, in this seventh chapter, uh, uh, he gives, he's getting ready to, 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 to uh, finish his dedication. He, he's finished his prayer. And after he finishes his prayer, Fire comes down from heaven and consumes the burnt offerings and the sacrifices. And the glory of God filled the temple. And it was so, God was so much in the house that the priest couldn't even enter into the temple. Oh, hallelujah. That, that's powerful. And all the people bowed their faces to the ground and on the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, for it is good for his mercy endures forever. Then they, then they all, the king and, and, and the people offered 
these sacrifices. And, and then after they got through offering the sacrifices, uh, Solomon consecrated the, the middle court and, and in front of the house. And he did all of that. And then they started having a feast. And when they started having the feast, it was just supposed to be a seven day feast, just like the, the, the feast of booths. And, uh, and they, and, but instead they continued on. For, for another whole week, celebrating, celebrating. And it says then on the 23rd day of the seventh month, he uh, the people went away to their own tents, joyful and glad and hard for, for the good that the Lord had done for David and for Solomon and for his people. Praise God. Solomon had finished the house for the Lord. And, and now he had done what he was told to do. He was done with it. And now we pick up the 12th verse of chapter 7. And it says, Then the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard your prayer. And have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. It's nothing like hearing the Lord tell you, I'm pleased with you. you you've done what I told you to do, and I'm pleased with you. I heard your prayers. I see what you have done. And, and I have chosen this place, this place temple. We call it today Solomon's temple. I've chosen this temple for myself and a house of sacrifice. God appeared to Solomon. God accepted Solomon's prayer and God chose the temple as a place of sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, we, 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 we in the New Testament, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God has chosen to dwell in us. Oh, hallelujah. And when we pray, God will appear. God will accept our prayer. Because God has chosen us as a place for prayer and sacrifice. Oh, hallelujah. Can you see how we are just like this temple? And the question is, have you dedicated yourself like Solomon dedicated this temple? Are you praying to God? Or are you studying his word? If you are, he will show you the way. He will appear in some shape, form, or fashion to give you a message. Even coming through the word, coming through worship, coming through praise. Are our churches today where all the body of believers come together? and assemble together the fellowship? Are we worshiping and praising God? Are we dedicating ourselves and, and sacrificing and consecrating that place of worship? You say, well, how do you do that? You come dedicated, consecrated, and ready to praise and worship God. Oh, hallelujah. And so, after God told Solomon this. He now tells Solomon a, a message for the people. Listen to verse 13. He says, when I stood up heaven and there is no rain, excuse me, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land and send pestilence among my people. If my people 
who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. When I, when I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal the land, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayers made in this place. For I know I, I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. God is giving a message to the people. And the first thing he did, does is tell them the consequences of not obeying. God is saying here, I, when, when I cause a drought or, 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 or seeing a swarm of locusts or seeing a plague or a disease, because he doesn't say why you did it, but, but we know that it is sin that's in the midst of it. Some people always talk, well, why is all these natural disasters happening? Why are all these people getting sick and dying? Why is it droughts and stuff? There's sin in the world. Wake up. And we need to pray. God is telling us that, 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 that when these conditions occur, Recognize that there is sin in the world. And then, do what you're supposed to do. This is a warning. This is a warning. He's telling us there's consequences when people don't obey God. But then, he tells us how to stop these consequences of sin from happening. And this verse, we, we say this verse, we say this verse, and when we say it many times, people aren't just praying this verse uh, when they read it, but they, they are, and that's P-R-A-Y-I-N-G. What they usually are doing are doing P-R-E-Y-I-N-G. <laughs> they are praying on people. No, no, no. This, this is for us to do individually. This is for us to do collectively because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so he says, if my people, I got to stop right there because I got to look at that little bitty word, I am. If, if my people, that word if is the introduction to a conditional clause. It, it, it is there to, to help us understand that, that there's a condition. Providing that you do this, presuming that you do this, supposing that you do this. As long as you do this, uh, 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 in the event that you do this. So he's saying, if my people, if you do this, check this out, which are called by my name. You've been chosen by God. You call the child of God. You call the sons of God and the daughters of God. You call the princes of God. You call the princesses of God. He, he, he says, he says he's already chosen us. We're peculiar people, chosen people. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, which are called by my name, are you called? Yes, we're all called. And he says, here it is. God's people must humble themselves. Shall humble themselves. This is the condition. It's, it's a humbling situation. You got you to gotta remove your pride. You got to swallow your pride. And, and I'm here to tell you, I've never seen anybody choke when they swallow their pride. 
Humble yourself. And he says, God's people must pray. And pray. And pray. And pray without ceasing. Because we're living in a troubled world. Somebody got to humble themselves and pray. I love that song. It says, somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. They took a little time and they prayed for me. My mama prayed for me. My daddy prayed for me. My sisters and my brothers prayed for me. My grandmama prayed for me. Somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind. And they took a little time and they prayed. For me. And not only are you to be humble. Not only are you to pray. You got to do this. Seek my face. That's what God said. Seek my face. The word of God said. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. We got to seek. We got to ask. We got to knock. Seek and knock. And if we ask, it'll be given to us. If we seek, we will find. If we knock, the door will be open. You got to seek his face. You got to take some time and get into his presence. Being humble and ready to pray. Then he says, turn from their wicked ways. Oh yeah, we got to repent. We got to turn around. If we going wrong, we got to go right. We got to take a 180 degree turn and go in the direction of God's will. He's looking for a repentant heart. He's looking for a contrite heart. He's looking for folks that are really sincere about obeying his will. So we have to repent from doing wrong as his people. And he says, if we meet all of these conditions, by humbling ourselves, by praying and seeking his face and repenting, he made a promise, and God is a promise keeper. He says, then, that, that's, that's the other side of the condition. Then, he said, I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Somebody holler restoration. Yes. After the call, after the locusts and the drought and, and the plagues, if we just pray, God will hear from heaven and forgive our sins and heal the land. I loved on yesterday when all those children, all those young people from all over the country marched on Washington, D.C. because they, they don't want, they want to do something about all of this gun violence in, in the schools. And, and they prayed together. They humbled themselves. They, they sought the Lord's face. Now, I don't know what the politics are. I don't know what, what the politicians are going to do. It does not matter. What does matter is that they met these conditions. And God heard their prayers. And he is going to forgive the land. Forgive them that do, that, that is doing this. And then he's going to heal and restore the land. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I, I could stop this lesson right there. That's more than enough. But we got some more to go to. Oh, hallelujah. This is such a wonderful lesson. And so, after God told them about the consequences of disobedience and, uh, and, and, and how to stop these consequences, then God sanctified and dwelled in the temple. Listen to the text, verses 15 and 16. He says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive 
to the prayers made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. He says, my name is going to be stamped on this place forever. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be alert day and night to the prayers offered in this place. See, because I've chosen you and I'm sanctifying this temple. God's going to listen to our prayers. His name is stamped on us. God is watching and his heart is always there. I love this passage of scripture. My eyes and my heart will be there perpetually, will be there forever and ever and ever. It's good that the Lord never sleeps nor slumbers. He's always watching over us taking care of us, and his heart, not only is his eyes on us, but his heart, his very heart is for us and on us. Glory to God. So God sanctified and dwelt in the temple. So this, this concludes the message for the people. The consequences of, of not obeying and how to stop these consequences and God sanctifying and dwelling in the temple. Now, God has a message for Solomon. And that starts at verse 17. Because see, one of the things I've learned about God is that now he will give you a revelation about the world, and other people. But God is a personal God. He want to deal with you and I personally. And he wants to talk to us to make sure that we're on the right road too. Listen to the text. Verse 17. As for you, he said, as for you, Solomon, here is your condition. If you walk before me as your father David walked and do according to all that I have commanded you. Another condition. If you keep my statutes and my judgments, then, he says in verse 18, I will establish the throne of your kingdom as I have covenant with your with David, your father, saying, you shall not fail to have a man as the ruler of Israel. Mm -hmm. God's message to Solomon was that God would bless Solomon if he stayed obedient. If he walked before like his daddy walked before God. If he, if he did according to all that God had commanded him to do. If he kept the statues of God and, and his judgment. Then God said, your kingdom will be established forever. Are we living and walking with God? The scripture tells us we live, move, and have our being in him. So we ought to walk with him and talk with him and, and be obedient to his will and his way. Take his guidance and then follow his statutes. And he will make a covenant just like he did with David. That's what he's saying to Solomon. And that covenant is also made with us. Because we have a new covenant. And our new covenant is not through David in the sense that like Solomon was with that. But our new covenant is with Jesus. And we got to walk with Jesus. We got to talk with Jesus. We, we got to live for Jesus. 
So that, that right there was God blesses to Solomon for his obedience. Now he wants to tell Solomon the consequences due to Solomon's disobedience. There's blessings and then there's discipline. We talked about the blessings. Kingdom of God forever. Some, somebody from your line and we know that Jesus came from the line of David and Solomon. And that's a beautiful thing. So, so, so that says that, that he did his best to be obedient. God kept his promise in spite of, despite of, excuse me, all the sins of Solomon and the people, God still kept his promise. Oh, hallelujah. So now let's look at the consequences due to Solomon's disobedience, starting at verse 19. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you and go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot them by my I uproot them from my land, which I have given them and the house, which I have sacrificed for for my name, I will cast out of my sight and will make it a proverb and a byword among all the people. Mm. That's some serious consequences. He goes on to say, and as for this house, which is exalted, everyone who passes by will be astonished and say, why has the Lord done this thus to this land and this house? Then the, the, they, they will answer because they forsook the Lord God of their father who brought them out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods and worshiped them and served them before. Therefore, he has brought all this calamity on them. That's some serious consequences, y'all. Consequences of disobedience. Israel will lose their land. God will reject the temple. Then the temple will be destroyed. And Israel will become the talk of the town. All because Israel turned away from God and his commandments and his law. And we know that they eventually did. But thanks be to God. He did come back and restore them after they prayed and sought his face, humbled themselves, and turned from their wicked ways. Oh, this is a mighty good lesson. We always need to obey God. It's, it's better to obey God. We ought to always pray. Seek his face. Humble ourselves, and God will bless us. I love that song, Trust and Obey. For there's no other way to be happy with Jesus but to trust and obey. I want to please the Lord. I want to I want to please God. So I'm trusting him to be faithful. And then I want to obey God. Because I, I don't want the consequences of disobedience. I want the blessings of obedience. And even if I do fall short, I'm not going to run from God. I'm going to run to God. Because we all will fall short of the glory of God. And then we need to repent and turn from our wicked ways. And God will bless us. Well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we recognize that what you challenge your people to do in Solomon's day is what you're challenging us to do now, to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek your face and turn from our evil ways. Help us, Lord, to give heed to both your warnings and your promises of blessings. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Before I end this recording on Facebook, I 
want to pray with you the prayer of salvation. Uh, the reason I love to pray the prayer of salvation is because if you truly believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and, and you confess it with your mouth, repent, turn from your wicked ways, you'll be saved. Yes. And I believe that salvation through Jesus Christ is done by confessing your faith in him. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Facebook, be blessed. Next Sunday is Easter. This Sunday is Palm Sunday. I forgot to say it earlier. Happy Palm Sunday. We wave our hands in praise to God as he begins his Passion Week over 2,000 years ago. And we look forward for Resurrection Sunday next week. And we'll be talking about the Resurrection Sunday. So be with us on next week. Praise God for you. Bless you. And always remember to be a blessing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Facebook.